Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Saturday, October 10, 2020. Amen, amen. Thanks for joining me. Rainy day in the high 10, but I'm still bringing you the 411 on the buffoonery and the shenanigans. This article is pertaining to Brianna Taylor, and this is the current update at the moment. Lord have mercy. Help me. Help me, Jesus. The Daily Beast is the source. Soul witness who heard cops announce themselves that Brianna Taylor raised changed his story. This week, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron made the bombshell announcement that the cops who fatally shot Breonna Taylor would not be charged with killing her, calling their use of force in the March raid justified to protect themselves. In that justification, he said that one witness corroborated the three officers' insistence that they knocked and identified themselves at Taylor's Louisville home while executing a search warrant in connection with the narcotics investigation. It contradicted claims from Taylor's boyfriend, Kenny Walker, and 11 other residents who said they didn't hear the cops announce themselves. Instead, Walker thought he was being burglarized and firing a warning shot that triggered a tragic chain of events. But according to documents and audio obtained by Vice News on Saturday, that show witness initially told investigators days after the March 13th raid that he didn't actually hear officers Brett Hankerson, Jonathan Matley, and Miles Cosgrove announced themselves. The witness identified by Vice as Aaron Sarpy, but by other outlets and public records as Aaron Julie Sarpy, was picking up his daughter from a unit above Taylor's when the raid took place. It wasn't until he was interviewed a second time about two months later, two, excuse me, two months after the raid, by a sergeant in L. MPD's Public Integrity Unit that Sarpy said he heard police say this is the cops. Sarpy's flip flop, the latest twist in the case that has made Taylor an icon in the Black Lives Matter movement, calls into question the strength of Cameron's case and the grand jury report, which state officials are demanding be made public. I never had faith in Daniel Cameron to begin with. I knew he was too inexperienced with a job of this caliber. I knew he chose to be at the wrong side of the law, Tamika Palmer. Taylor's mother said in a Friday statement. My hope was that he knew he had the power to do the right thing. He he had the power to start the healing of his city. He had the power to help men over 400 years of oppression. What he helped me realize is that it, it, it will always be us against them, that we are not safe. On Wednesday, a grand jury indicted only Hankinson, though only for recklessly firing shots that endangered a couple in other units. Matt Lee and Cosgrove, the cop who fired the shot that killed Taylor, weren't charged. Cameron's charging recommendations were at least partly based on Sarpy's testimony, since the Attorney General said Wednesday that investigators had an independent witness corroborate the officer's account. My office was not tasked with determining if this was a tragedy, as it was, Cameron said Wednesday, admitting that it was unlikely more charges would be laid. My job was to put emotions aside and investigate facts to see if the state law was violated. Wednesday's charges came more than six months after a no-knock warrant was issued for Taylor's apartment as part of a controversial narcotics investigation into a, into a 26-year-old's boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover. According to Vice, LMPD's Public Integrity Unit first contacted Starpy a week after the shooting. The officers involved in Taylor's warrant had previously said Starpy was outside the apartment upstairs and got in an argument with Hankinson as they were banging on Taylor's door. When Sergeant Jason Vance asked Starpy if he heard anyone identify themselves as law enforcement, he answered, no, nobody identified themselves. Remember that was said. At the end of March 21st conversation, Vance told Starpy investigators would be calling him again to conduct a formal interview. Investigation notes suggest Attempts were made to contact Starby, but he didn't speak to the Public Integrity Unit again until May 15th. Hmm, interesting. In a seven-minute call, Sergeant Amanda Feely pressed Starby on whether he knew the individuals entering Taylor's home were officers and if he heard them announce themselves. This time, Starby said he heard police identify themselves, a change that suddenly corroborated the testimony of the officers at the scene. Now, mind you, this is two months later. Okay, quick play. It's been so long now, Sarpy told Seeley on the call. I recall some of it. Sarpy also told the New York, New York Times that he saw the officers as he stepped out onto the exterior staircase of Taylor's apartment unit with his two-year-old. He said that before the officers ordered him to go back into the apartment, he heard at least three loud knocks on Taylor's door and heard at least one of the officers scream, police. Sarpy, however, insisted to the Times he only heard them say, 
the statement once. Despite Sharpie's changing story, his claims to have heard police from the front of an apartment doesn't offer complete clarity on whether Taylor and her boyfriend would have heard it from their bedroom towards the back of their unit. Sharpie did not immediately respond to the Daily Beast request for comment. Vice reported that the witness declined to speak with them, saying he had to speak with his lawyer first. The LMPD and the Attorney General's office also did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Hankinson was fired in June for extreme violations of police protocol after one Tony and blindly firing 10 shots into Taylor's apartment, including several shots through the patio door and window and into a neighbor's apartment after Walker fired an initial shot. Matley, Cosgrove, and the detective who requested the warrant were put on administrative leave. Six more officers are reportedly under investigation for their role in the raid. Earlier this month, the city of Louisville reached a $12 million settlement with Taylor's family in their wrongful death suit. And this is the Daily Beast. Sad source for this information. So, the recap of this article is that this Sarpy guy is the one who initially said that he didn't hear anything. He was the one who had an altercation argument with the said police officers the night of the shooting, ordered to go back in the apartment. He's talked to one investigator, then another investigator, then two months later, he then recants and says, yes, I did hear them say police. What is the 411 with this story? Who is telling the truth? Did the police announce themselves by saying that they are the police? How many times did they say it before they put the banter, the ram thing, and ram it into the door? What is the truth? Was he coerced into saying he heard the police? Did they ride him down and say, you better tell the truth, blah, blah, blah? Did he feel scared? Did he do what a lot of people do, what they say? After they've been interrogated so long, they just go on and tell the police what the hell they want to hear. What's the 411? Did they bring up something from his past? Yeah, the queen is going there today. I'm on one. Shoot. I'm going to keep it 100. Did the police bring up something from his past to say, this will come out, or this will come out. Well, you know you did this over here. I don't know, because I know how the police work. I mean, all of them ain't dirty, but guess what? Some of them are. And some of them don't mind digging in your past and pulling up some old skeletons out your closet and say, you know, this will come out once people know that you're the one that seen this, heard this. You see where I'm going? Yeah. Okay. So, Sarpy, honey, the girl is dead. Did you hear the police announce themselves or did you not? That's what the public wants to know. Changing your story two times does not look good. It also doesn't look good that Kenneth Walker is allegedly saying Rihanna did the shooter. But ballistics have come back yesterday to say Kenneth Walker is indeed the shooter of the cop. We have this other cop who has been charged with one time shooting at other civilians' apartments, plus Rihanna Taylor's apartment through a window and glass door acting like he was a damn ninja, out of control, Rambo, wannabe. Yeah, Queen is on one. And so happened the couple whose apartment he shot into are Caucasian. Now, should I play crazy and say that's the only reason why he was charged? It's because the people were Caucasian in the other apartment. And I'm not trying to be funny. No disrespect to some of you good old white folks out there. But you understand what it's like. You should by now know what it's like to be African American and know that sometimes we just don't get justice because of the skin color here. And I'm keeping it 100. I'm keeping it 100. Because you see, before when I was reading, he said, said information about the other apartment people being shot up. It never revealed that they were white. So now you all know that the other apartment adjacent to Miss Brianna Taylor's how Caucasian people with a child. And now we will wonder if that said Caucasian family will file a lawsuit against the city for shooting up in their apartment and damn near endangering their lives, endangering, don't use that just, Angela. They endangered their lives, which they did, whether they were Arab Jews, whomever. Yes, they did. This is some buffoonery. All this gossip, all these rumors, all this backlash, all this bashing of a dead girl, of her choices to date a drug dealer, have his money, allegedly his dope, 
in the end, she is dead. She can't speak for herself. She can't tell us no tales. So all we have is the said information from some police officers and Mr. Kenneth Walker. And right now, the only walker talking that's doing the most talking is a lawyer for Mr. Kenneth Walker trying to put the blame on a dead person. This is utter ridiculous, shameful, and so disrespectful. Because in the end, we are all entitled to be who we are. You may not like it, but everybody got skeletons. Everybody has done something wrong. Everybody has been around people that have partook, partake in illegal activities. You hold conversations with them. You talk to them. You put them in your car. You got in their car. You went in their home. You let them come in your home. You've loaned them the money. You dated them. You married them. Yes, the queen is going there. I'm on one. Everybody needs to quit acting like they've never seen or fornicated or done wrong or, particip or participated in illegal activities. Because I know people right now who appear to be upstanding and they some dirty dogs. I said it. I said it. You can watch the news and see for yourself that very prominent people get high, use drugs, pill for drugs, manufacture drugs, hang with drug dealers and addicts. Yes, honey, the queen is on one of them on Saturday. COVID ain't stopping nothing today, baby. Quit playing. Shameful. We will see how this pans out. I'll bring you the same information pertaining to this, to the death of Breonna Taylor, what other shenanigans will come out, who else will have something to add to the table. But like I said, Mr. Kenneth Walker, if you are viciously spreading rumors that that young lady, Breonna Taylor, shot that cop, you are foul and rank. Your lawyer is already foul because he's the one putting the 411 out that you said. Hello? And if you sign an off on it, which we know you had to, your ass is rank. You are right. And all this back and forth of who's in the wrong the jailhouse conversation from the Tatum report stating Glover thinks Kenneth was wrong for shooting the police, which we already know most people would have shot back if they had a gun in their home. They didn't know who it was breaking the door down. People blaming him for being the problem or why the police were watching her heart in the first place because of Mr. Glover, her ties to Mr. Glover. In all actuality, she wasn't even seeing Mr. Glover at the time of the raid. So obviously you weren't investigating properly or you would have known that. And you would have also seen, saw Mr. Walker going in and out of her apartment as her new beau. Like, share, subscribe. Drop the comments below. Thanks for joining me on this rainy day in the high pen. God bless all of you. Mask up. Stay safe. Thanks for the prayers, the well wishes, the concern. God is good. He is able. And I'm glad to be here today just to give you the 411. I will be back with more information, more videos, more commentary, and more buffoonery. This is Everyday Shenanigans. Thanks for joining me. God bless all of you. Bye-bye.